I barely ever see patients that have colon cancer. We don't, they don't deal with colon cancer. Um, and as a known fact that you can take a person from Japan who grew up in a culture in Japan and put them in American culture and their risk for colon cancer increase almost, almost triple. <laughs> As long as in Japan, they're okay. But when they come to our culture and start eating food that we eat, then the risk for colon cancer truly increases. Now, what does this type of lifestyle do? Well, and we see this even in our churches, in our communities. Diabetes is a leading cause, y'all know, of blindness, amputation. Also, what is, what is disease? Kidney failure. Go to the nearest dialysis place and you'll see mostly who? African Americans on the dialysis machine. Yeah. All day long. And then a lot of a lot of people have hip fracture because of osteoporosis of the bone. Mm -hmm. And it's a known fact that within six years of a recognized heart attack, about 22% of men and 46% of women will be disabled with heart failure within six years. So if we don't tackle the, the source, the problem, then we would deal with a whole lot of different issues. Um, I just turned 43, and I, one thing I've learned, I'm learning as even physicians, sometimes for my, even for my own health. What I did, what I was doing wrong, I, I don't like, I'm not a sweet person. I don't eat cookies and cakes and pies. But what I was doing, though, and, and Bishop Parker helped me out a lot last year, this year, I used, what I do a lot sometimes, well, I, I just work 12 hours, work 10 hours jobs. And I would eat one time a day. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And that's the worst thing you can do for your body. I don't care if it's just, if, I don't care if it's a salad. You, you stress your body out, but your cortisone levels in your body goes up from stress. Mm -hmm. Especially some type of jobs that we do, I mean, you're a doctor. Mm -hmm. And when you eat one time a day, your, your body, God has designed the body to be, it's very smart. The body is saying, you want to feed me one time a day? Oh, I'm going to hold on to it, everything you give me. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to burn it real slow. Yeah. And it slows your metabolism down. So as, the, as you're older in life, our metabolism slows down anyway. Right. But you know, you can speed your metabolism up. Even at 50 and 60 and 70, the best thing to do is to eat multiple meals, right. small meals. Eat five and six times a day. So now I understand why my grandmother was eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and eat snacks between. Mm -hmm. That really makes a difference. Your body sees things different. And your body says, Okay, I know you're going to feed me two hours from now. So I'm going to burn everything you give me. Two hours from later, eat some of the little snack, maybe peanuts, and maybe some grapes, whatever. Your body says, you know what? I know you're going to feed me two hours from now. So we'll burn all that up. But we eat one time a day. Two times a day, is, it slows your metabolism down. I read a study, and I want to know, I looked at I said sumo wrestlers versus the saints. <laughs> so the saints. So I want to see. You know, sumo wrestling is, is right, it's probably the only sport where we actually aim is to gain as much body fat as possible. The bigger you are, the better wrestler you are. And I said, well, so how do they do that? And so I started researching. Well, they do certain things. First thing is skip breakfast. When you skip breakfast and just start going all day long, it slows your metabolism down. Right. You know, and you, you need something to kick your body off. If it just, if it just a bowl of oatmeal, or just a handful of grape, or orange. When you skip breakfast every day, you slow your metabolism down. Mm -hmm. Second, they always exercise on an empty stomach. Mm -hmm. That causes stress on your body. Mm -hmm. And also, y'all see it's a, it's a metabolism thing, right? Mm -hmm. It keeps metabolism very slow during the workout. Mm -hmm. Third, they eat just a couple of large meals a day. It's a known fact that one sumo resident can probably eat about six chickens, whole chickens, in one meal. Six whole chickens in one meal they do. But they'll eat one or two times real big large meals. And all, they, all they're doing is, is processing the food real slow, okay? And, and the rest, your body can only process so much food at one time. That's why we don't, we talk about gluttony. Mm -hmm. When you eat real big giant meals, your body can only store so much at one time or process it. The rest is stored. So they eat a lot of, eat a big old meal once or twice a day, and the rest gets stored. They take a nap immediately, and these are, these are requirements for their, for their sports. They take a nap immediately after eating. They sleep for at least four hours to keep their metabolism slow. 
they drink a lot of alcohol a a excess, they might drink almost 100 bottles of beer at one time. Mm -hmm. And that increase your cortisone levels. And this mm -hmm. is the problem right here most, this is the biggest problem right here mm -hmm. in our bodies, cortisone levels. Mm -hmm. And they eat late in the day. They go to bed with full stomach, cause their body to have a rush of insulin, forcing their body to store the f food as fat. Mm -hmm. So I said, Lord, we do a whole lot of this stuff even in the church. Mm -hmm. Besides, maybe besides at home, but we do a lot of this stuff <laughs> <laughs> in the church. <laughs> so why should we? So I'm trying to be more kingdom minded, even my own. Why should we be kingdom minded? That's a good question. Sure the bishop said, Doctor Buckles, why are we not more kingdom minded? I said, we come to our own health. We we big on fasting, we big on praying. But we never, we never really been on health until something happened to us. We, we get a heart attack, or we have a stroke, or something bad happened to our health. First thing, this is a, I, I love this, one of my fa uh, favorite stories. There was a man who was drowning. He prayed and he asked God for help. Several boats came, and each time the man refused, he said, man, <coughs> I'm waiting for God. I'm waiting for God. Finally, he drowns. And he asked God, why are you going to save me? And God said, I tried to. Every time I set a boat by you, you refuse. So, two things here. The man refused to get into the boat and refused to get help from others or some, a source of who was able to help him. So often, God sent signs and want signs by our house to let us know things not going right. You give all this education. And, and a lot of times we just refuse until it's too late. Mm -hmm. And then we drown. Um, Deuteronomy says what? I have set before you a life and death, blessings and curses. Therefore what? You, you choose. He didn't say he gonna choose for you. He said what? You choose life that both you and your seed may live. And, and, and y'all, I am now in my own life said, Lord, I'm trying to choose life. You can't, be, you can't help the kingdom if you always broke it down right. and sure. barely can make it. Good, right. the kingdom. Mm. So I said, Lord, let the saints, let us choose life. Mm -hmm. Let us choose life in our own life. So this is a study done at Northwestern University. Uh, they did a study about, about five years ago, and they look at cities, Chicago, uh, the school is in Chicago, Northwestern University, School of Medicine. They tracked 2,433 men and women over the course of 18 years, Chicago, Minneapolis, <laughs> Oakland, California. Birmingham. And they looked at people who, they actually, the study was done at people who attended church. And they defined church, frequent church as going to church at least once a week. So people went to Bible class or belong to the church. And they found that the people who attended church sermon or worship service frequently were physically more likely to become obese by middle age than people who did not attend church frequently. Mm -hmm. It tells me a whole a lot. <laughs> what, what are we doing? And I like to say here, on Monday, she, she, has a, she has a piece of cake in her hand. On Wednesday, she has something else. And on Sunday, she eats you.